How do I report a bug in Windows 10? Hi everyone, I'm Leo Notenboom for AskLeo.com where I've been answering questions and fielding bug reports since 2003. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure and hit that subscribe button down below to get notified when I get new videos released almost every day, every week. And at the end of the video, if you found it helpful, be sure and hit the like button. Both of those things will help other people find the answers they're looking for on YouTube. So it's not at all uncommon for us to run into you know, problems with Windows 10, be it misbehavior, be it crashes, be it out and out bugs that we can identify as such. No software is perfect and Windows 10 is certainly no exception. The real question is, what do you do with that knowledge? How do you report a bug to Windows 10? There is an official mechanism, but I want to caution you first. This is going to annoy some people, and I apologize for that, but a lot of what I hear people complaining about as bugs in Windows 10 are in fact not bugs at all. They are Windows 10 behaving exactly as it is designed. The bug that they feel they've encountered is in fact something they simply don't like or something that changed that they didn't expect or um, any of a number of different situations. The person experiencing the bug is perhaps unfamiliar with how the software is supposed to work and in fact is using it improperly. I often refer to this as operator malfunction. And I've done that myself. I have certainly misused software only to find out that what I encountered wasn't a bug in the software. It was a bug in my own way of using that software. And once I understood what was supposed to happen, it all made sense. I may not have liked it, but I understood how it was supposed to work. So there are definitely scenarios where a bug is not a bug. It's simply an opinion. Now, the good news is that the reporting tool I'm about to show you is in fact for both. But please understand that a bug, an actual failure to operate as expected, as it was intended to, crashes and lost data and any number of those kinds of scenarios, those are very, very different from things simply not being to your liking. Microsoft needs to hear about both, but it's the bugs that are more likely to get acted on. I also need to point out that not all bug reports are created equal. If you submit a report that is nothing more than your ranting about something you don't like, they're not going to listen to it. They just aren't. They shouldn't. On the other hand, if you take the time to provide a bug report that has useful information, what you expected, what actually happened, the details of your configuration, the same kind of information that I might ask for when you ask me a question. Those are reports that are significantly more appreciated and more importantly, significantly more likely to actually get someone's attention. You may never hear about it. In fact, it's very likely you will never hear a response to your bug report, but by providing a complete, concise, well-written, well-thought-out and researched bug report, you've increased the probability that somebody will read it and that, in fact, somebody will take action on it. So how do you do the bug report? Let me show you over in Windows 10 Home. The Windows 10 Feedback Hub is what we're looking for. So I'm just going to click on the Start menu and start typing Feedback. And there it is, the Feedback Hub app. When you fire that up, you get an opportunity to give feedback to make Windows better. Now, they say report a problem or suggest a feature. From what I've been able to tell, they both basically give you the same thing. So what they're really doing here is a quick top level sorting of things that you think are truly a problem, crashes, bug reports, that kind of thing, or things you want to suggest as a feature. It's up to you which one you want to use. Obviously, uh, you have the opportunity to enter whatever you want in these fields. So 
When you summarize your feedback, again, a one sentence, very short summary that clearly identifies what it is you're talking about, what it is the problem is. It's not Windows is broken. No, it's something like File Explorer displays the wrong file size in some cases. That's a great summarize, right? That's a great topic. And then you can go into more detail about exactly how you got that to happen, what you expected, what your system is like, and so forth. How to write good feedback is a good primer on exactly what they're looking for in the feedback that they want. You'll have an opportunity to choose a category for this, and you'll be able to find similar feedback. This is one of those search functions that basically will tell you if there are others who have already reported similar issues. And at that point, you'll also have the opportunity to simply say, yep, yep, you know, this is what I've been experiencing. I don't need to do anything more. On the other hand, if what you're experiencing is unique or the similar feedback doesn't include the information that you really think is important to include, you'll have the opportunity to add more details. Now, it will be suggested that you sign in with your Microsoft account. In fact, you can see it here at the top of the screen. If you ever expect to hear back about the feedback you provide, I actually recommend you do this. They will acknowledge receipt. I believe they'll actually automatically acknowledge the fact that they've received your feedback. And if there's anything happening with that feedback, that's the account that they're going to send the feedback to, that they're going to let you know about. I recommend you do sign in with your Microsoft account whenever you submit feedback so that you have an opportunity to hear back later about how things turned out. Not guaranteeing you're going to, but if you do this, you at least have the opportunity. Now, two more issues. I mentioned before that not all bug reports are created equal. I want to point out also that not all bugs are created equal. It's very interesting. There are individuals who feel passionately that something is seriously broken. Whatever feature that might be, they feel very strongly that it's horrible and that it never should have been this way. And yet when you or I or Microsoft looks at the report of what's actually going on, it's just not that big a deal. I want to prepare you for understanding that not everything is important. Microsoft has to draw the line somewhere. Every software vendor has to draw a line somewhere. They can't fix everything because otherwise they would never release a product. So they're going to prioritize what comes in. Not only are they going to prioritize the bug reports for being well written and complete and accurate, but they're also going to prioritize the bugs themselves based on their severity, their impact to other users, how likely they are to actually happen, those kinds of things. Data loss is one of those things that is prioritized higher than, well, this just doesn't display properly. You get the idea. That's not to say that they're ignoring all of these bugs. They may very well be looking at each and every one of them, but they are going to triage them. They are going to prioritize them and not every bug report is going to get addressed. Finally, should you do this? Should you bother? My take on it is probably not. Surprisingly, I really don't think that this is worth your time and effort. Unless you're absolutely certain that what you've discovered is something that is incredibly unique or incredibly common or something that only you can provide value to Microsoft on and it's so important that they're going to pay attention to it, I honestly don't think it's worth the time. Here's why I say that. One is I don't want you to have an unrealistic expectation that because you submitted something, it's going to get addressed. That's unlikely to happen for reasons that I've already mentioned. But more importantly, there are already programs in place that you're probably not a member of for people to submit their feedback on all sorts of issues earlier. The Bugs that are reported by the so-called Windows Insider program are, I would expect, prioritized higher than the bugs coming in from the field. 
The Insider program is where you get access to early versions of Windows before they're actually released to the general public for exactly this reason. Insiders are encouraged to provide all sorts of feedback about the operating system. Even not everything they report is going to get paid attention to, but they're the early adopters. They're the ones who are doing a certain amount of early testing. They get higher priority. If you want to be one of those, then sure, go join the Insiders program and everything that that involves. But if you're just a user and you just happen to run across something that you don't like or it's misbehaving or whatever, you're probably better off realizing that somebody's probably already reported it, probably even somebody in the Insiders program. It's in a queue somewhere. It may or may not get fixed. And if it does get fixed, it's going to take a while. You would be better off understanding how best to live with whatever it is you found. Be that just accept it or work around it or learn to use the product differently or use a different product. You get the idea. Focus on those things that are in your control. Once you've released a bug report or feedback to Microsoft, it's out of your control. Don't get me wrong. If you want to provide feedback, by all means, please do. It's an important aspect of how Microsoft learns about their products. But if you're looking to get something fixed and you expect that fix to happen quickly, it's unlikely and unrealistic to think that it will. For the article on which this video is based, for related links, for updates, for comments, visit askleo.com slash 4385. I'm Leo Notenboom. This is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.